what's happening? Hey, what's up, Glenn? Well, I'm digging holes. You're still digging holes. I'm having breakfast. Oh, you have. Hey, Danny, I too, I'm here. Hey? Okay. It's me and Dana. Ah, okay. I already had my breakfast not too long ago. Don't rub it in. How about Dana? <laughs> Did he have breakfast? I'm kind of making it as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I've been uh, working, Glenn, uh, another job. Great. Doing uh, plumbing and, uh, you know, air conditioning, plumbing, boilers. Um, I'm Do you have the right lot. hands for it? Do I have the right hands for it? Well, you got to have the right pants. Because plumbers uh, got to show their crack when they're working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. But well, the, the technology that's, that's now. Part is, of the task. Mhm. Do you use a boiler in your house? Hey. Eh? Do you use a boiler in your house? Do you use that or? A boiler, uh, hot water heater. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, a boiler heater. Yeah. Uh, with the new technology that I'm seeing that they're bringing in, they're like small computers that that do the job of a, a hot water heater and what a boiler would do all in one. It's one small unit. The hot it's, water heater. Uh, huh? Electronic equipment mm-hmm. are, are ba- basically being used as replacements for mechanical equipment yep. all over the world. Most important reason for doing it is they can be tracked electronically and they can be halved electronically. Mm. The uh, power company has the ability from uh, its headquarters to see exactly what you're doing with what appliance at any time of the day or night. Of course, that that began when uh, they began to track surges in power that were being used would would indicate somebody is running a grow up in their home. Now they're putting it in all the equipment. One of the things that we got from uh, Megan, one of the owners of the house was last year she bought us a clothes washer. Clothes washer, about eight months into its use, stopped working in the middle of a cycle. The minute it stopped, you couldn't open the door because there's a magnet that keeps the door shut while the machine is running. But here we had a situation where the power had been cut off. The machine wouldn't start again, and the wet clothes was inside. And finally, I had to pry the door open to get the clothes out. I was telling the story to a taxi driver who lives just a block away from here. And he said, same thing happened to mine. Less than a year old. 
And, of course, the guarantee was for 90 days. And I called Sears, and they sent a man out to fix it. And the price for fixing it was the same price as the machine. (laughs) They said I could have gone out and bought a second one for the same price as I paid to repair it. So ours is not working. (laughs) Wow. And we haven't got the funds to spend three or four hundred bucks on on a machine or to repair the machine and Jennifer's been washing clothes in the bathtub. Oh. On her hands and knees. Yeah. Oh by the way, while I think of it, Danny, thank you for your deposit at the feed store. Canadian Institute for Political Integrity appreciates your assistance, and all the animals appreciate the feed. Happy to help. <laughs> yeah, I should be able to be able to help you out because uh, yeah. for the last week now I've been making. More than I was on my other job, so I'm not making totally. a lot more, but I'm making more, so I could. You're making a lot more money. No, no, I said I'm not making a lot more. I'm, I am making more. I'm yeah, making. but it's harder on your body. Um, I wouldn't. It, 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 there's some hard work some days, but. It's more just being up longer hours. Yeah. Yeah. And um I guess it's by the hour? Uh uh about it by the day. It's an off the books job, it's not on the books. I'm doing this 'cause I'm I'm uh, I'm going to school for this thing. I took a class a while back. Now I'm taking another class for this thing. You know, so hopefully one day I could become like licensed and do my own thing. Well, there always will be a need for plumbers as long as water is required in a house. Yeah. The problem, I guess, is the um, places you have to work in are often the dirtiest Dingiest, coldest. Yep. And you, you're dealing with customers. I learned this too. Like, I deal with customers. They all they all want to save money. Yeah. And it's, it's like um, everybody's ripping each other off. Either the customer rips off the, the yeah. plumber or the plumber. So I, I'm figuring out in my mind there has to be some type of middle ground here where. We're both happy and nobody's ripped off. Fair. Um, um, but like my my the guy I work for, he's telling me like things that he does, you know, to get money, and I I I don't feel any need to um, rip anybody off. But I, I I I definitely I'm paying attention to certain people. Like you, like we, like mm-hmm. the other day we did a job of uh, a guy for a guy from from Bangladesh, and it was a job that was like it's an expensive job, but the guy said okay, I'll, he asked for this set amount. It wasn't too much. <coughs> the, I think the job was like seven hundred dollars or something. The guy gave him three hundred dollars and laughed at him. And then hey. and then and he's telling him he's like hey it's, that's, that's yeah you're ripping me off and so he has like another two hundred and he's just like you know dangling it in his eyes like and pulling it away and just laughing at him and I 
I thought that was so disrespectful. It was, it was, it was like he was enjoying it. I can hardly hear you now. Oh, well, uh, I, I'm just I'm just talking about um, just things you find in, in, in uh, dealing with uh, in this business, in this plumbing business. Yeah. Uh, kind of cutthroat. It can be kind of uh, cutthroat. Well, I'm home right now because there's a, f- a lot of flooding going on right now. All the roads are flooded. Yeah. A foot and a half of water. Cars are stranded on all the major highways yeah. down here. So uh, I was told not to come into work today for, for at least for the time being. Uh, over there by the airport has like a, over a foot of rain accumulated already. Yeah, it's pretty and bad. I heard on the news that um, one of the places that they wanted her to interview for was a job on Long Island, and the name of it, I forget right now, Islip. Islip. Yeah, Islip. Islip yeah. was uh, totally flooded this morning. Hmm. That's where I was born, Glenn. Yeah. Yep. That's actually between, right between where Jared and I live, yeah, between each other. Hmm. That that town. Um, Glenn, have you noticed any uh, type of movement uh, with the celestial bodies this week? Is there anything? Um, well, there's been a super moon. Oh, okay. okay. Which. Um, Basically, you see in the sky for about three nights in a row. That's when uh, the moon is the closest to Earth. And it looks uh, about 50% bigger than it normally does. It's been on... um, uh, the east side of the house. No, wait a minute. Is it the east? No. It's the west side of the house that it's been sitting on, uh, I guess, around Monday, Tuesday, maybe Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, somewhere around there. You must have seen it there. Yeah. You would only get a super moon, I think, once a year. But something about this year is different Mm. where there's, uh, I heard, three three in a row. Three months in a row or something. Mm. Which to me would be... um, Normal for the system that uses solar calendars to um, activate some important event. Right. Because you well, couldn't get a better marker in the sky than. Uh, Reaching the fact that there's a solar moon on the news. Mm. And I've heard them talk about it twice now. I don't know if we've had two and there's still one to come or something. I know it's a lot of all like kinds of uh, genetic. Uh, activity going on around the world, it seems like they've determined this period in time for the purpose of genocide. Different genetic groups are being called in um, Ukraine, in Syria, in uh, Gaza, Yemen, 
all across North Africa. And now we're starting to get the um, possibility of it coming to North America with all of the floods and, and fires that are striking the Northeast. Fire, fire more to the west, water more to the east. I, I would not be surprised if um, we didn't see a major catastrophe blamed on some foreign terrorist but in fact, um, either natural, but known of, known of its uh, uh, possibility uh, of happening at this period in time, or activated by uh, manual instructions to a... Uh, potential disaster. Now, I've been digging under the house to try to isolate everything dealing with magnetic impulses, electromagnetic power uh, activated by the the hydro company, the electrical company for Ontario, feeding in to a, a, an electromagnetic response underground. And of course, if you, um, if you live in a magnetic field, you can, in fact, suffer many physical consequences. I'm basically told that uh, depression uh, leading to suicide mm -hmm. and uh, uh, senility, any kind of long-term memory loss, are, are part of, of the problem. Uh, genetics um, are basically attracted to magnet activity, so it gets pulled downwards towards the magnet in the ground. And um, there is a link, of course, to, uh, to iron water being the mode of transmission as you drink water you're adding uh, minerals mostly iron and you know the effect that a magnet has on iron so I've been going through the um, material that was placed here prior to the building of the house in 1972, trying to figure out what part of it is natural, what part of it was added before the foundation was built, and uh, part of what I'm looking for is pink rocks, because pink rocks suggest that there is a mi mixture of stone and iron um, in, in the makeup of the rock itself. And I have uh, so far found uh, nine uh, rocks that I would describe as being pink. Some are full rocks, roundish type in shape, uh, 
Um, and the size of a, uh, say, a, a football down to the size of a softball. And then there are pieces of rocks, pink rocks, um, and all of that is linked to the fact that When you find a rock with iron in it, and depending on the conditions uh, that affect that rock, uh, strange things happen. And if you heat up, there was a fire, and you heat up a rock, that has iron in it, of course, the material does not expand at the same rate, iron expanding at a different rate than than the stone material itself. And at one stage of the game, should you shock a hot rock with cold water by trying to put out the fire, it explodes. And that explains why there are pieces of rock. It's because conditions over the years, over time, at one stage of the game caused an explosion. I'm told by geologists that the largest red rock in existence known to man sits directly underneath the northern peninsula of Michigan. And therefore, should someone want to cause what is known as the Lou at the Sioux, the breakup of the barrier uh, that holds back Lake Superior it could be done by heating the rock from below ground. And, of course, that whole area is known for mining iron and was the reason why Ford Motor Company was established in Detroit. It's because of the access they would have to iron to make steel for cars. Uh, so there are um, benefits and dangers associated with um, hydroelectric magnetic devices that they can be affected by a magnet or they can be affected by some manual transmission of a signal. I would suggest that uh, General Motors who have in fact been doing what seems to be endless recalls uh, over the last few years are basically the victim of the technology they've invented being um, hydroelectric or uh, electric magnet and uh, especially the starting devices on a uh, on a vehicle are magnetic in operation electromagnetic in their operation and that's exactly what occurred to my truck that it was parked next to the house 
since uh, 2008, <coughs> starting uh, at a period in time about 2010. Um, many times I went out and, and the vehicle just wouldn't start. Um, the starter, uh, the key, you could hear the key was in the right place and doing its job, but there'd be no um, broom, broom, no, no lighting of the fuel uh, with the magnet. And four or five times I had to have the vehicle towed, the Canadian tire, which is uh, Cross Canada Auto Parts and, and Store and Repair Shop type of thing, with a big upside-down triangle as their symbol. Um, and they would claim that there was something um, came loose or a wire was broken or anything like that, and the charges would, would be somewhere between 250 and $600. But having happened four or five times, um, I stopped using their advice and bringing it in because we just didn't have the money and, and figured out how to jump the, uh, the starter and used to do it manually. Recently, of course, the transmission basically died and the cost of repairing the vehicle would have been more than it cost to buy it in the first place, which is the same thing as happened to the clothes washer. So something linked to magnetism, magnetism in its own right is not a bad thing. Their scientists would always tell you it protects us from uh, the harmful rays of the sun. However, if, uh, if you remember discussions we've had before, prior to the Ice Age, the first religion, which was in northern Africa, was voodoo. And the main thesis of their religion is remote control. So that um, suggesting that if you made up a doll of the person you wanted to cause problems to and pricked it with a needle, that kind of stuff, you could in fact hinder uh, someone at a distance through remote control. It's, it's not an accident that a um, main religion for the West was created in, uh, in the Middle East, Jerusalem, and within 200 years was established as the main religion of Rome called Roman Catholicism, and that its initials are RC, as in remote we uh, believe that uh, magnetism is what they were talking about. If you take a magnet and you put a piece of paper over the top of it and then pull out uh, different coins, place them on the sheet of paper, you'll see that they will basically jump and be uh, stuck 
to a certain position, depending on the size of the coin and uh, the location and the time at which you put it there. But if you move the magnet from under the sheet of paper, all of these coins rearrange their position. Now, think of the coins as the glands in human bodies. And magnetism being present under the house. And the spaces within the house being magnetic fields. Depending on where you are in the house and the type of construction used for that house uh, will determine where the magnetic fields are most important. There are basically two things that will enhance the magnetism um, coming from under a house, and one is a cement basement. And if you live in the basement of a house, as many young people do in, in homes around North America and Europe, uh, especially in the places up north that have furnaces in the basement and that. Um, if you're to live in that environment for years and years, you do, in fact, affect the body. Now, in this particular house, I had to leave my camper, which I was living in outside and move into the house itself so that I could be available should something happen to Tom and he would need help um, and I would know about it instantly if I were in the house but wouldn't know if I was in the RV. And in the time that I lived in the house, by myself, I was living in the basement for approximately uh, five years, five to seven years. And during that time, on a number of occasions, all of a sudden my uh, leg would not function. My hip was kind of jammed and sore and I had to limp. I had a hard time walking for about six months at a time, uh, especially trying to feed the animals, and having to jump over a fence in the winter time, that kind of stuff gave me a lot of problems. But at the same time, the internal structure inside my stomach began to be drawn down from my stomach into my scrotum, which um, I have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis now. So that's, that's a, a danger that most people in North America would be suffering from. Uh, if they are living in basements. The second aspect of what I've seen is um, what's the house made out of? And if the house has drywall uh, in most of the divisions, um, drywall will basically act as an insulin, insulation in different rooms. So depending on where the rooms are in relationship to the basement 
can have an effect. But worse than all of that is um, if you're living on the top floor and um, the insulation in the ceiling separating you from from the air in in the ceiling in the room underneath that insulation it can prevent the escape of electromagnetism that builds up in the house and rises to the highest level of containment. So what you're seeing in, in the totality of the thing is the wealthiest people live high, the poorest people live low, but there are conditions in both places that can affect uh, the human being through its electric system and the fact that water is the mode of transmission and human beings are mostly made out of water. The movement of the glands, the, the stopping or starting of signals from glands to brain uh, can in fact affect memory and that kind of activity. Um, all of that is present in um, most houses in the Middle East, uh, not in the Middle East, in, in the east of North America, from the middle to the east of North America, especially the further north you get because more and more basements and insulated ceilings are more present in colder places, although insulation is also used when it's too hot to keep the hot air out. So what I am told by geneticists is that uh, the condition of our genetics suggests that human beings, without this kind of stress, uh, would live an average age of 120 years. Whereas under today's conditions, the average age for population in this part of the world is 75 to 80. So it means basically the loss of about 40 years of potential life exists by a number of conditions such as heart attacks, strokes, lung disease, all of which depend upon the natural movement of electrical currents within the body, but are faced with unnatural movements uh, by the uh, existence of electromagnetism not simply being where it normally lies but extracted from the ground and fed directly into the house through the wiring systems put up by the electric company, and the telephone company. In the old days, uh, the biggest danger to a house was uh, um, that
that a thunderstorm would send a wave of electricity to the highest point on the ground, which often was a house, and caused a fire. So they decided that they would add a lightning rod to houses um, so that the current would be redirected from the house and down into the ground. Um, a good idea for not having fires. However, um, for whatever reason the hydro company has, they, in fact, changed the system. And today, uh, the only place you see lightning rods uh, are on barns and outdoor buildings, but there are very few uh, on houses. Now, you know that uh, hydro sets up a hydro pole system up and down the streets and runs wires to the different houses and brings electricity into a panel usually in the basement on most houses that have a basement and uh, they are basically responsible for bringing in electricity if however they bring in too much electricity they affect all of the appliances through what is known as a surcharge power that comes into the house and their solution to the problem was to take what used to be a lightning rod and put it into the ground and run a wire from the panel the electrical panel to this six foot rod buried underground. Now, studies done on electromagnetism, however, suggest that uh, electricity, such as lightning, looks either for the highest place on the ground to affect it if it's coming from the sky or the sharpest pointiest place if it's coming from the ground and of course ground rods were introduced instead of lightning rods and in order to get them into the ground they were pointed on one end and hammered into the ground and then a wire was led into the box to act as ground. However, what that does is seek out electrical magnetic energy from below ground and bring it into the house. And it is basically from all of the wiring, whether telephone or hydro, that exists in the house, that it can, in fact, if you could see it, as opposed to just measure it, you would know that different rooms have different uh, electromagnetic fields in them. Each one of them will determine the lifespan of the resident. There seems also to be a connection between the amount of electricity that creates a field in the house 
if one is using an analog meter from the hydro company, which is more mechanical in nature, or an electronic meter, which can in fact be hacked uh, from from the hydro company, uh, and I suggest from many other people who are into the hacking business, uh, which can, in fact, draw rather than simply measure, draw electromagnetism into the, uh, the house. And what they did at the same time they figured that out or before then, they figured that a rod was not the most efficient means of picking up electromagnetism from the ground, but that a rectangular plate would do a much better job. And I don't know exactly what year it was, but sometime between the 1970s and now, they stopped using rods in the ground and replaced them with plates. Now, it's, I'm sure, a coincidence hmm. that... Uh, A plate has the letters L-A-T-E in it, which to me suggests um, a link to a word meaning you're dead. Oh. The late Mr. So-and-so. Of course, if you sit at a table and you eat off a plate, that also can be the beginning of a health problem if you're not eating the right foods. Uh, you're, in fact, starting the journey of death in your own body on a plate. And if you're in the Catholic Church, the last priesthood that began to work for Roman Catholics are called oblates, O-B-late, the original be dead. So... As I go through the ground and pull up these pink rocks, started to give me a sense of why women have chosen the color pink mm -hmm. as their preferred ribbons and what have you. Mm -hmm. You see them wearing pink caps and the such. I thought it was in relation, like to like the uh, female genitalia. That's what I thought it was. In know. the late what? I thought it was related to um, the female like, genitalia. That's what I thought it was. The, the well, point. relate has the word late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you find so, all your answers to your problems are hidden in the words you speak. Mm. Maybe Late. I shouldn't speak anymore, Glenn. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't speak anymore, Glenn. Yeah, well, certainly uh, the English language seems to have been designed uh, for that purpose because... You know, they, there's a song that says, what's it all about, Alfie? Mm -hmm. Well, Aramaic to Latin to French 
to English would be the initials for a word Alfie if you uh, consider the fact that they are always allowed to leave out one letter which would have been the I in there but they make the I silent by replacing it with an E and yet pronouncing it English not English but English What's it all about is the language from the year zero or the time of Jesus Christ to today. Now, this this electromagnetism, I've seen it. Like, they use that theme over and over again in the current films. They they just write it into the storyline and make it part of the story. Yeah. So I see that they're talking about it, and then I see um, the the guy, the big guy, uh, famous guy, uh, two days ago died of uh, they said he was severely depressed. Robin Williams. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's probably linked to that process. And um, do you know? Do Don't you see- forget as well that he died seated, seated at huh. the door, huh. and that has been my means of communication huh. to the passing traffic. Hmm. And then they have, um, I'm not sure if it's linked, but I'm pretty sure it's linked in some way. It's a, a big uh, thing now with a guy named um, Michael Brown, I think his name is. It was a shooting in uh, Missouri. Yeah. Another a black kid. A young black guy with a degree and mm-hmm. just got a degree. Yeah. His mom spoke out on TV and said, you know, how many black guys get degrees these days? It's it's a struggle for them to get there, and therefore they've become the most dangerous part of the community. And uh, cops don't want to wait until they have to deal with them later on in life as uh, philosophers or writers or lawyers or what have you. So they, they don't do what they need to do to kill them before they reach that stage. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Just food for thought. Well, you know, now, I guess the the police uh, industry or whatever, it, it seems like it's being dismantled or discredited because for a while now, now you see videos, new, always, always new situations where police are abusing their power. They're showing that. When this has been happening... The longest well, time. what they don't realize, mm-hmm. I'm sure most of them haven't got a clue, but that their genetics comes from a line of people who acted like policemen. And at one stage of the game, when they first started being policemen, their job was to help the population but over time their genetics is changed to be more into that of a controller of people than a servant of people Uh, they become more and more 
fascist in their activities because insurance companies pay them bonuses for doing things that will add to the funds flowing to the insurance industry. So it's not surprising that everyone with a badge believes they are getting an injection of brains when they get the badge, when in fact what the badge is is a marker to define those people who have been genetically engineered to the level uh, that the Canadian government describes as loony. The penny became the loony when it became 100 times stupider. You get a Canadian dollar and they call it a loony. It used to be a copper when it was a penny. But a hundred pennies makes one loony. The Lou are at the Sioux, but <laughs> Yeah. The Lou. They are all on board with the program, such as as I saw when I laid charges in the early 1990s against the government raising a 5% kickback conspiracy in Ottawa. Who drove the getaway car? It was the police. Who manages that activity? It's the tax collection, the revenuers. Hmm. Last um, month in July, um, having no vehicle to get around, having to take a taxi to go wherever I had to go, I was called to a meeting for Jennifer's uh, court, whatever you want to call that, Mm -hmm. refugee board. And that meeting was held in Ottawa in the TD Bank building. TD is, of course, missing the two letters in the middle, which are U and R. And if you added those letters, it would be the turd building, as in crap, mm-hmm. opera-like. And it's directly... Uh, across the street almost from Parliament Hill. And it's where people hold video conferences for the government. And you can be sure that there are people at all ends uh, listening in. When the uh, person in Montreal came in and prepared to start the meeting, I suggested to him that there was something wrong with we having been given only audio tapes of meetings which are being recorded in video. And and I was assured that That's all that was being prepared at a video conference was an audio tape. Makes absolutely no sense to me. I mean, why would somebody not want the images to be broadcast? Simply the audio. He assured me in 
that that was the case. And to make his case, he called the technical person to come into the room in Montreal and sit there beside him while he was to ask this guy um, to vouch for the fact that uh, only their room and our room uh, were uh, listening in and that there would be no video made of the section. And he asked me if I had any questions of the person. And uh, I said, yes. Please tell me what you would answer should in the coming days you receive a subpoena from a judge who would want to know who else was listening in on this meeting? Please tell me what you would respond under oath to this judge. And all of a sudden, his demeanor changed a bit, and his response was, well, I can only vouch for the Montreal end of the connection. I have no way of knowing what they're doing in the auto end. And I said, we're sitting across from Parliament Hill. I hope nobody thinks that I would believe that this meeting is not being sent off on the open network, which is and includes Parliament Hill and other places where government people have offices. And he said something to the effect that he couldn't know that from his role in Montreal. And I said, thank you, because had he said he could, uh, he would have been open to uh, criminal charges. That kind of activity, when we have to travel to Ottawa where we don't have a vehicle, caused us all kinds of problems. <laughs> the problems were added to when I went to the bank to collect my old age pension only to discover that a letter I had been sent prior to the meeting in Ottawa uh, by a few days um, said that they had concluded that I did not need the support of uh, poverty ranking support in the old age pension, and thereby they had cut it in more than half. So that I would have no money for transportation to get to meetings like the one in Ottawa, or even to go to town for groceries or to take Tom to the doctor or, or take some of the clothes that can't be washed in the bathtub to the laundromat. Now, when I called them up and told them that I had left copies of their letters with the court in Ottawa, which was held on the Thursday, and uh, it was now Monday, and I didn't have any of 
that half of my old age allowance, uh, they said, by magic, I guess, they had found my documents. My, mind you, these are uh, income tax returns done in March that they've had in their possession since March through their own agency, H&R Block. They had found them, and I would be reimbursed for the half seven eight hundred dollars they took and that they would do it on the 8th of august because it was too late to get it done through the uh, normal payday on the 8th when i went to the bank it was not there we returned on the 9th couldn't access our account. Kept saying um, um, unavailable at this time or something like that. We waited until um, we saw a person come to the machine and and try the machine, and that person was successful. In, in using the machine, but not in receiving money. So we knock on the door to the bank, and there was a supervisor in there, and she came to the door, and she said to the woman trying for 100 bucks, she had made a deposit, but she also wanted $100. Try it again, and the woman tried, and it worked. Then she asked me to do what I was doing, along with Jennifer, we were there, and I said, we're just trying to get the balance. And every time we tried, it kept saying, not available at this time. And the woman said, I can't help you on my computer. It doesn't come on until the bank opens, so you'll have to come back. All this time, there's a taxi, you know. So we had to let go of the taxi, uh, go to a restaurant, and wait there until 9.30. Uh, and then we went back, and the woman had one of the cashiers check our account, gave us a statement. By this time, of course, it's the 9th of August, and we had been told it would be deposited on the 8th. Nothing there. So the woman at the bank said, I don't know if it's supposed to be coming in. We haven't got it. And she said, there is one possibility, and that this having been a long weekend, last weekend, with the bank closed on Monday, it may be that things that were supposed to be done on the 8th won't be done until, the 8th being a Friday, won't be done until Monday because the clerical aspects of the bank is not open on the weekend, only cashiers. So, we had to leave, and now, of course, we still don't have money, so we have to wait until we go and get the groceries, and and Jennifer needs to go to the hospital for an infection that she's living with, and we can't go because we're not sure when we get there, if we'll have the money to pay the taxi. So yeah. we now know and have proven to the court that CCRA, which used to be Customs Canada Customs Revenue Agency, 
who have changed their name to CRA, um, Canada Revenue Agency, is in fact in on it, and that it's not a coincidence that their name has CR as the first two letters. Number two is number one, RC, remote control. So when, when you have to try to stay alive under the conditions of knowing that the insurance industry is in on it, that the um, intake level of government and corporations, the people at the bottom who take the things in, are programmed and in on it that the electrical company and the telephone company are in on it, and that the revenue department of your government at a uh, level of intake at the ground are in on it. All of these things added together explain how this world got to be in the mess we're in. And when you have a Navy, such as the U.S. Navy, with a staff of 900,000 people and a budget of $170 billion a year, and that they are tasked with identifying what would be the best human being for space flight, because they consider space in the U.S. to be equal to the sea on Earth. It's just another place to, to sail their ships. Um, they are tasked with finding out what shape would best be made for a human being to travel in space. And having done studies on people like Jennifer from birth on, and I suggest myself as well, uh, we are basically the, the lab rats on which everything has been tested and then is passed on to other people once it proves that it does the work it's intended to do. And only those people with extreme uh, smarts, abilities to figure out that their life is not their own, that they are under some kind of remote control, can ever be expected to fight their way out of this programming that began uh, the recent version in 1789 at the French Revolution when they liberated the leadership of their heads and plopped them into a basket and sent them off for a study at a lab in Latvia. That's what we're living with. We're now over 200 years of reprogramming population that can be done simply by inserting uh, babies they've manufactured genetically into the population, babies they call foundlings. And once inserted into the population, their genetic pool is transferred to the ones they copulate with. And since that reproduction lasts four generations, it means the one insert can bring on babies for a 
period of 80 to 100 years. Well, they began doing that in North America uh, at around 1800, the year 1800, and stopped in 1955, uh, at least in a place called Ogdensburg and the Grey Nuns who were doing it. So if they've made babies for almost 200 years, and those babies made babies for 100 years each, you have basically accounted for the entire population of the Western world. And the, the fact they call this period in time the period of Mary, which is giving birth through genetic engineering as opposed to normal human activity. Uh, the word Mary uh, seems to be key. In French, it's pronounced Marie. And all you have to do is spend enough time thinking about this process, where does the word Marie or Mary come into play in softening up human beings so that they'll do what they're told to do without argument, even if it makes no sense. And the word is called marinate. And your friend who was found hung at the door of his bedroom lived in Marin County. So you know that the evidence does exist. And it may be circumstantial evidence because they're not about to write us a letter telling us that that's how they did it. But if one has the brains to work out the circumstantial evidence to the point where it gets be beyond question in a court of law, you would be asked to consider that to be proof of what has happened. Well, we have proof of what has happened because new found land, a place in eastern Canada in the Mary times, has the word found in it, new foundling. And where they were making the babies that they call foundlings in the maritime was in Labrador. So the road from the lab to Newfoundland joined the two, even though they're separated by water. And the first babies they made, they placed them in a place uh, on the mainland and called them Acadians. And when they found out that the genetics of these Acadians was not quite what they wanted, they sent in a Scottish military and caused them to escape to be evicted from what is now New Scotland called Nova Scotia. And these Acadians went by boat down the east coast of the United States, turned into the Gulf of Mexico, and settled in a place they now called New Orleans. And they're called Cajuns in the U.S. Of a cage. And then the process 
of making babies was transferred into Quebec. By the way, Robin Williams' middle name is McLaren. A C L A R. Ran. Ran is a bird. So where you're born is is important. I was living in Ottawa as a child, and the average family in Ontario was two or three children. Yet right across the river in the province of Quebec, the average family exceeded ten. Many of them as many as twenty children. Now, how can that happen when you have two people who are struggling to survive? They got paid by the nuns to raise foundlings in their family with their own kids so that Ten, fifteen years later, there would be no knowledge of who was their real child and which one they were raising for money. Uh, as you back, hit me back then. Yeah. So here we are. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Is uh was Dana? Sure, there is um um some memory we have that you stated you might have been adopted. Oh that possible. I thought my, my, my mom always jokes around. I know she gave birth to me. I can yeah. I can but, um, Robin Williams may have been adopted too. Mm-hmm. I may have been adopted. Jennifer may have been adopted. Hmm. We're all basically adopted because they called us parent. <laughs> the father that rents. Ah, yeah. rent. Uh, rent. You rent, you rent, and then you give you rent them to the father. They own them. <laughs> they made them. Yeah. Yeah. All the electricity in my house just cut off while you were talking. I didn't hear that. I said all the electricity in my house just shut off a few minutes ago while you were talking. Isn't that strange? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. I guess so, they, uh, they didn't want you to post a copy <laughs> of our discussion because that would make sense. millions of people might find out who they really are. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, me and uh, Dana. Yeah. I was gonna say, me and Dana. What was the thing with that that lady, uh, Dana? It was a um, a lady uh, who was mentioning you, mentioning Glenn, uh, and oh. uh, Sharon. I think her name. She 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 used like a name. She goes on some like Valkyrie pseudonym. Um, she calls herself Sharon of the Rose or something? Of the Rose of Sharon? Yeah, basically, Glenn, um, I was on YouTube, like, I guess a week ago or so, and I saw, it was like your, yours and Jennifer's name, but she was calling her, you know, Wilder. 
right? So mm-hmm. I, I listened to it, and it's this girl ranting about um, a situation of a friend of hers that went to your farm, and she's going on and on, and I realized that she was talking about Ambika, and it was actually Ambika's friend who was, uh, or someone who knows Ambika was, was talking about how basically she was forced to go into Canada and stay over there and everyone was trying to breed with her and then she decided to leave and she, you guys were giving her all these problems and all this kind of stuff. That could have been there. made up too. She probably not, said probably I, to breed with her, I'm told, married her in <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> right. Why did she go to Scotland and marry the one who was trying to breed with her? Right. She was so, well, also a visitor like her. Mm-hmm. And she chose to leave the room we gave her and sleep with him. And then leave here and go to Scotland and marry him. Yeah. We know Glenn. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I think I think that that lady that lady who's saying those things, I think she's like I don't know, like just put there to kind of mislead or, or... Yeah. Of course. They wouldn't want sometimes. the real story to be told. Because they created it. The <laughs> women who are no longer women but are more a complex compound complex structure <laughs> called women are candidates for space flight in the future. That's what the Navy is trying to build, the proper mixture between woman, copper, and technology. They call them toonies in Canada, second version made on Earth. They look like women, they act like policemen, and they (laughs) report back to their control 24-7 through technology inserted inside of them, probably at the request of the Sloan Sloan Kettering Cancer Institute that Um, has a business of lopping off breasts out of women whether or not they have cancer so that they can work out how to fit the technology into that space that will then communicate back and forth what they're seeing, what they're hearing firsthand 24-7. That's the kind of person that they want to breed and at the age of six confined to a um, a pod for one and send it out past the edges of the solar system into the Ur cloud to investigate the different rocks that are up there and find out which ones might have uh, minerals. Hello? Hello? Oh, it's being cut off again. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. You were talking to him on your phone, not right? Yeah, my house phone. And it's not connected to the system, you know? But it stayed even though you weren't on your house phone. 
Right? Did you call me from your cell phone? Yeah, I'm from my cell phone. How was he still on before? <laughs> if your phone was on. I don't know. How did, you get, how did you get two different lines? I don't know. I guess it's like two different lines. All right, let me try to get him. Hold on. <coughs> Was that recorded? I'm trying to figure out why if your phone was disconnected, he was still talking if you called him. Mm. Right? Right, hold yeah. That was weird. Hello. 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 Yeah, you went off all of a sudden. Yeah, it happened again. Yeah. Okay, Jennifer just walked into the room. She'd like to add something to this conversation. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Hey, the both of you. Hey. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good. Hey, um, I just heard the last part of that with this Rose of Sharon person. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I got a statement to make over that. I'm here yeah. by my own choice. And every day that I'm here is by my own choice. And I am being pursued by the U.S. Navy, and it sounds like that woman has something to do with it. I don't know how much she knows that she has much to do with it, but she sounds programmed to me. Oh, yeah. And um, this is like basically the only thing I have to say is that I'm here by choice because I will be provided at some time in the future here with the ability to be able to paint and do some clay and sculpture work, etc., And that is how I will speak, and that is how creation will speak through me. And of the knowledge that comes from my DNA is going to come out through that work. And I think that some of these women know it, and they don't like it. And the U.S. Navy knows that, and the researchers that have been using me all of my life know it. And they don't want that to happen. So that that's my statement. <laughs> <laughs> it. <They're> signing off. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I give you I give you guys back to Glenn. Stay dry. <laughs> and well, that's you. Yeah. And try. Stay safe. Yeah. I gotta yeah. get back to my um, digging. I'm about uh, ready to pop out uh, on the other side of the hole I'm digging and uh, can stop for a little while, so i got to get that work done. All right. I don't know what the end product will be uh, other than what I discovered on the ground, the... Uh, Rod pointed towards the ground was there to collect magnetism rather than exude surplus electricity in the house. Uh, and I'm uh, now working. What else is there? And like I said, I found uh, nine uh, either full or parts of pink rocks. Uh, that had been laid down around the area where the rod was, probably uh, to attract magnetism towards the point of the ro- of the rod. And um, uh, I've been working at it since last year um, on the south side of the house, having 
done some preliminary investigation at the northeast corner and uh, um, west uh, corner of the house to see if there was any linkages that were coming from across the street here uh, in the way of tunnels or or hoses or cables or what uh, in in the uh, north and west side i i found um, uh, reasons to believe that county road 18 may be built over a tunnel and uh, that uh, certain plastic type pipes circumference about two inches uh, coming from different directions uh, had no useful purposes that I know of in the house or the operation of the house itself, but could very well be used for the transmission of gases, um, uh, gases that uh, would accumulate uh, on the floor uh, of the um, uh, top story and then uh, being heavier than air work its way underneath the door well and down into the ground floor uh, uh, where the TV is and, and again down further into the basement. Uh, we know, of course, that propane is artificially uh, given an additive to make uh, the smell that you get when you buy it at your barbecue center. Uh, however, under its normal uh, original state, there is no smell, and, and such a gas could be fed into the house um, and and become part of a fire and explosion which would be accentuated by the pink rocks underneath as they throw water on the fire there are all kinds of suggestions that this place um, was visited this 34.2 acres, which is the site of the temple in Jerusalem, same size, uh, was visited in uh, the year, over a 100-year period between the year uh, 1000 and 1100, uh, or 1050 and 1150, somewhere in that range. Uh, during the period where all attention was focused on the Crusades, the Vikings came here, funded by the Vatican. And the question is, what did they do while they were here? And one of the suggestions the cell has brought forward is, that it is um, above the Canadian shield and out of the range of the flood that would come from the Lou at the Sioux. The other thing is that there is a need to build a temple uh, in the future on this site, uh, a temple complex because it's to include a uh, hospital and a um, place for foundlings, that that kind of stuff. And there is also the possibility that the uh, um, temple treasure from Jerusalem um, may have been brought to North America and a number of places uh, dug, like, like some of the islands, off of the Maritimes, suggesting that they're buried there when, in fact, they would, in fact, be located here. 
the important thing about the temple treasure is it includes something called the Ark of the Covenant and is normally carried around by four men at the end of two long poles, I'd suggest 16 feet in length, and that um, uh, device uh, would, in fact, show an arc, um, electric, magnetic, uh, electricity, jumping from one wing to the other, and therefore it is a um, electromagnetic device, which would be used. Uh, in the birthing process to send energy into an amniotic fluid that would contain an egg and uh, a fertilized egg that they want to turn into a foundling. And that uh, this is their biggest secret, that they had uh, been given instructions from pre-ice age, uh, that uh, this is, is basically how you did it. Could very well be located here. Are you there? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Phone just gave me a buzz that it's going to die soon. So, um, and and that their menorah, the, the seven candles confirm that the top of the number structure is seven so that if you're uh, uh, looking at uh, zero to nine eight and nine are the existing women and males males being eight women being nine they've been um, removed from the structure and the future numbering system will go uh, one, two, three on one side, uh, five, six, and the other with four, number four being the top located in the middle. That would be their menorah, a minnow basically suggests a small fish, um, salmon spawn uh, just before they die, and the end product is is different from the one that died. I got to go now. Okay. All right. Talk to you again sometime soon. Yes. All right. Bye for now.